and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Boom, 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 boom. What a lovely day said Pat to Jess as they drove along the valley on a fine sunny morning. They came into the village and stopped at the post office as they did every day to collect the letters. Good morning, Pat called. Morning, Pat said Mrs. Goggins. Looks like a busy day for you. Lots of letters and parcels. <laughs> well, at least it's a nice day for it. That's odd, said Mrs. Goggins. Most of the post seems to be for Katie and Tom Pottage. Ah, but of course it's their birthday. Oh, so it is, said Pat. Won't they be excited when they see all these parcels? They are lucky. I remember when I was their age, waiting for the post. Hey, I'd better be on my way. <laughs> They'll be looking out for me. Well, I'll be off. Goodbye. Boom, 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 boom. Pat was on his way. Before going to the Pottages, he had to call at the village school. Some of the children had arrived early and were playing in the schoolyard. Bill Thompson came running up to take care of the letters till the headmaster came. He always did that because he was the oldest. Oh dear! Right in a puddle. Sarah and Lucy Selby asked Pat if he was good at hopscotch because they'd just had new lines painted in the yard. Well, it's a long time since I played, said Pat, but I'll have a go. Let's see now. He was quite good at it. Whoops! Pat was enjoying the hopscotch so much he almost forgot the time. Hey, I'll have to be going. We can't have the post being late, can we? <laughs> Especially today. Bye-bye, Pat. Goodbye. turned in at Greendale Farm. Katie and Tom saw him coming and ran to meet him. They were so excited they couldn't wait to see what Pat had brought them. They're twins, you see, so it was a double birthday. Pat wished them a happy birthday, then took a letter to their mother.
Tom's present was just what he wanted. But Katie didn't seem very pleased with hers. What's up with Katie? asked Pat. Mm, she's wrong side out today, said Mrs Pottage. She's lost Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann? Is, is that the little doll she takes to school? She takes it everywhere. She's lost without it. I don't know what we'll do if it doesn't turn up. Oh, it's sure to turn up somewhere. Trouble is, it could be anywhere. We went to see Aunt Alice yesterday and called at lots of places. She could have left it anywhere. Don't worry, I'll look for Sarah Ann, said Pat. I might come across her. I'm good at finding things, you know. <laughs> we'll get her smiling again. You'll see. Cheerio. Come on, Jess. We've work to do. Next stop was the church. The Reverend Timms heard Pat's van coming. There was a card from Cousin Joan on holiday in Majorca. Pat told him about Katie's lost doll. Oh, she could have lost it in the church, said Reverend Timms. She always brings it. Oh well, seek and thou shalt find. Let's have a look. Mind your head. Found anything? called Pat. Oh! Yes, a bump on the head. At last, the Reverend Timms did find something, but it wasn't Sarah Ann. It was a lady's glove. It had the letters DT sewn inside. DT, said Pat. Dorothy Thompson, that's whose it is, I'm sure. I'll take it along for her. She will be pleased. Well, I hope Katie's doll turns up somewhere said the Reverend Timms. We'll just keep on looking till it does, said Pat. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. When Pat and Jess arrived at Thompson Ground, Mrs. Thompson was out with a basket, collecting the eggs. She was surprised when Pat gave her a glove with her letters. Well, I never, she said. Where did you find this? I've been looking everywhere for it. Then Pat told her about Katie's doll. I was looking in the church for it. The Reverend Tim's found your glove instead. Now let me see. Katie and her mother came to tea yesterday. She could have left her doll under a cushion. We'd better have a look. They searched everywhere. Mrs. Thompson found something, but it wasn't a doll. It was a penknife. Hey, that looks like Ted Glenn's knife. Goodness knows when he left it here, said Mrs. Thompson. Would you take it along for him? He will be pleased to have it back. Yes, I'll take it. I do hope you find Katie's doll. We'll keep looking. See you tomorrow. Cheerio. Bye-bye, Pat. What a day, said Pat to Jess. We found a glove and a penknife 
but no Sarah Ann. I wonder if there's any chance of finding her at Ted Glenn's. Ted Glenn was delighted to see his knife. He couldn't guess where Pat had found it. When Pat told him about Katie's lost doll, Ted said, hey, She was here yesterday with her mother. Uh, they brought a lamp to repair. So they went to look in Ted's workshop. didn't find the doll, but Ted found a watch that he'd forgotten he had. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Pat. That's Miss Hubbard's, he said. She brought it to be mended ages ago. She must have forgotten all about it. Would you take it for a Pat? Certainly. I'm going that way. I hope you find the lassie's doll, said Ted. So do I, said Pat. I seem to be able to find everything else. Bye, Ted. So long, then. Miss Hubbard was shopping at Sam's mobile shop whilst Sam was enjoying a cup of tea. Miss Hubbard was surprised to see Pat. And even more surprised to see her watch. Pat told them all about Katie's lost doll, but they hadn't seen it. Poor Katie, said Pat, and on her birthday too. I know. I'll take her a box of chocolates. <laughs> That'll cheer her up. Aha! Sarah Ann. So that's where you've been hiding all this time. It's Katie's doll, said Pat. I found her when I wasn't looking for her, sitting behind the chocolates. Sam was amazed. That child gets everywhere. I'll take the chocolates anyway, said Pat. They'll make a nice birthday present. Cheerio! Here she is, Jess. Keep an eye on her. When Pat arrived at the twins' party with Sarah Ann and the chocolates, Katie gave a big smile, the first that day. Jess joined in the party. And Pat had a piece of cake. <coughs> Delicious, said Pat. But it's time we were off. Bye-bye, <laughs> Pat. Bye. <coughs> Goodbye, everyone. Have a good time. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Ooh, another nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day. Wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. What dreadful weather. Just look at these letters. Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs Goggins. The post will get through. Oh, it stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. What a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Fogg? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's our flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. <laughs> it's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat. Watch it. Cheerio! Uh, 
At Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Pat. Come and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. <laughs> Bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. Oh, ta. Bye. The Reverend Tim's was having trouble with the rain, too. Pat, said the Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Look out. I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Waldron was just along the road. Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed. And got stuck. It's no good, said Alf. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I 
I know, he said. We can put a message on my plane and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S O S. That'll do it. He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter. It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message! Mind your back! Oh, oh. Thanks, Peter! Right! Pat waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room. Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I've finished this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> or you might have to swim home. Swim? said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again but there was a warm fireside to look forward to <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Be sure they'll be knock, ring, let 
posters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was another hot day in Greendale. A very hot day. Everything was drying up. It's a real scorcher today, said Pat to Jess as they drove along. I'm thirsty already. <laughs> Mrs. Goggins was trying to get cool outside the post office. Morning, Pat. Isn't it hot? And we're going to be without water today. I know, said Pat. The lake's really low. They're going to turn the water off this morning. Whatever will we do? <laughs> but they can't turn off the lemonade. Here, have a drink, Pat, before you go. Ah, just what I need. My, that's good. <sighs> that's much better. Thank you. Well, I'll be off then. Hey, don't forget Granny Dryden's parcel. It looks like something special. I won't. And thanks for the drink. Cheerio. Pat put the parcel in the van to deliver later on. He started his round with the village letters. He met Granny Dryden out shopping and told her about the water being cut off. Well, it's a pity the old pump's not working, she said. There were plenty of dry times in my young days, and do you know it never dried up, not once. I wonder, said Pat. I wonder if Ted Glenn could mend it. I must ask him. He can fix just about anything. Morning, Pat. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. Let's see, uh, I think I have something for you today. Oh, thank you. Right, Jess, that's the village done. Now for the farms. The water was already off at Greendale Farm. Peter Fogg was drawing water for the cows from the old well. 
Hello, Tom. <laughs> Helping out. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Warm work, this. Still got water in the old well. Let's have a look. Oh, whoops! <laughs> now you've done it. I wonder if I can fish it out with this hook. Ah, got it. It'll be nice and cool anyway. At least I didn't drop this down the well. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Could you drop this can of water off at George Lancaster's place? There'll be no water up there. Sure, we'll be going past there, won't we, Jess? Cheerio. Hello, Pat. Isn't this drought terrible? We haven't got a drop of water left. Don't worry, if you look in the back, I've brought you a can from Peter Fogg. He said you'd be short. Thanks, Pat. That's grand. Cheerio! Pat remembered to call at Ted Glenn's workshop to ask if he could mend the old village pump. Hello, Ted. Anyone at home? Ah, there you are. Pat asked him about the pump. What, that old pump in the village? Well, I don't know. It's worth a try. I'll get me tools. Leave it with me. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Dee, 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 dee. Boom, 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 boom. Mrs. Thompson was enjoying a cup of tea. Pat called with a letter. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. How are you getting on? Are you out of water like everyone else? Oh, no. Our spring's still flowing. Ah, very nice, too. I wonder how Ted's getting on. There's a handyman called Ted Glenn, and he's working once again. He can just about fix anything you'll ever need to mend. Maybe a tractor or a ladder or a broken frying pan. Just go down and see him and he'll help you if he can. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. All the valley knows that he's the best of handy men. They all say, if you want things mended, go and see Ted Glenn, a broken clock or a horseshoe, or an engine in a van. Just go down and see him, and he'll help you if he can. He'll just say, leave it with me, <laughs> leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up 
for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me, if you leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. Granny Dryden was watching out for Pat. He brought her a can of water as well as a parcel. Um, remember what you said about the old pump? Well, Ted's mended it. It's going a treat. When she opened the parcel, she discovered it was Pat's new digital watch, which she had ordered for him from Manchester. Pat was very pleased with it. I'll always be on time now, he said. Thank you for getting it for me. Uh, I'll bring the money tomorrow. Look after yourself. Goodbye. Pat had kept a can of water for himself, too. Jess kept a sharp eye on it. <laughs> he didn't want another wetting, no matter how hot it was. Postman, postman, Pat, can you guess what's in his bag? Is there a letter? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. May Never be sure there'll be knock. Bring letters through your door. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It is breakfast time in Greendale. If you knock on Pat's door and go in, you'll see Sarah bustling about. Julian, it's time you were off. Pat is finishing his breakfast. Time I was off too. Julian is getting ready for school. Right. Off you go. Bye, Mum. Bye. Jess, have you seen my hat? Where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Time we were off. 
It's not our usual day today, Jess. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Pat. Good luck. Hold on tight, Jess. Off we go. Sam Waldron's out early too. Morning, Sam. Morning, Pat. Where's your van, Pat? Can't stop. Taking the bus. A bus? What's he on about? Major Forbes has spotted the new notice in the post office window. Dashed good idea, what? It'll be extra work for Pat, though, said Mrs. Pottage. Morning, everybody. Morning, Pat. Hello, Jess. Come on, Katie. Time for school. Bye, Pat. Bye, Katie. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. We're ready to go. Hope you've got the keys safely. Oh, yes, Pat. And a fine morning to you, too. Here they are. Oh, thanks very much. This is exciting. I'll pop back in for the letters when I've got a warmed up. I left it down the next street, out of the way. Somewhere round this corner. Ah, there she is. I wonder why Pat has left his van round the corner. Here he comes. What's this? It's not his usual van. It's new. It's a Royal Mail post bus. You are going to be busy, Pat, now that you're to pick up passengers as well as deliver and collect the mail. I know. Granny Dryden wants a ride into Ingledale to do her shopping. Oh, that reminds me. You'd best see if the Reverend wants a lift. His old car broke down on Wednesday. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The post bus stops outside the church. The Reverend Timms didn't seem to be ready. Pat had some letters for him. Oh, Pat. I wanted to go into Ingledale on your lovely new post bus today, but oh dear. I found these knots in my handkerchief, and I know they're to remind me about something, but bless me, I cannot think what it is. Well, Reverend, I won't be able to keep my passengers waiting. I'll have to be on my way. Uh, don't wait for me, Pat. I'll get the old bicycle out, if I remember in time. Well... Here's your mail, anyway. Goodbye, Reverend. Bye, Pat. Off he went to the next stop. Granny Dryden was ready and waiting for Pat, with her stick and shopping bag. The door's on the other side, Granny Dryden. Well, Pat, this is something new. What a lovely way to go shopping. Mind the step. Oh! Whoops-a-daisy! Pat was feeling quite excited, now that he had his first passenger. Off we go, Jess. Oh, Pat, stop, I've forgotten me act. Oh, dear. Back we go. I won't be long. I knew I'd forget something. 
I wonder if we'll ever get to Ingledale, Jess. Ah, here she comes. It was a lovely hat. A pity to leave it behind. All aboard. I just hope she hasn't forgotten anything else. I think we have another passenger, Jess. Miss Hubbard must have a lot of shopping to do. Stop! 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 Thank you, Pat. If you could pass me a bag or two. Certainly, Miss Hubbard. Pat helps with the shopping baskets and carrier bags. It was a struggle to fit everything in. Thank you, Pat. Good morning, Granny Dryden. All safe and sound. At last, they were able to move off. There's Ted Glenn waiting by his workshop. What's he up to? He usually goes into town in his Land Rover. I'll ride into Ingledale with you, Pat. I need a new gearbox for the Land Rover. Oh, Ted, do look where you're putting your big feet. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. I didn't see your old basket there. It isn't an old basket, Ted, though it looks it after being stuck on your foot. It used to be a lot quieter carrying letters and parcels, didn't it, Jess? They went on their way at last. Over the hills. Round to the right. And along bumpy country lanes. Round to the left. Was Pat trying to catch up on lost time? Oh, slow down, Pat. You're making me all wobbly. Now what? Pat had to slow down because of Sam Waldron's mobile shop. It was a tight squeeze. Come on, Pat. Left hand down a bit. Take it slowly, or you'll scratch in your post, boss. Pat, how about a little light refreshment? I'm sure Sam has something we can buy. Yes, a biscuit would be nice. It seemed a good idea. Can I give you one, Miss Hubbard? Oh, thank you, Ted. Pat decided to check a nearby letterbox. He found two letters. You'll all be spent up before you get to Ingledale, said Pat. And we really should be on our way. I have the letters to deliver as well as you, you know. I haven't finished me biscuits. Take them with you. Mind the step, Granny Dryden. After you, Miss Hubbard. Bye, Pat. And thanks. Have we left any behind, Jess? That's one thing about letters. They never get out for a biscuit. He passes by Garner Hall. Hello, Pat. Good luck, old fellow. Oh dear, what now? What's B.C. Selby doing? Stop! Stop! Sorry, Pet. You can't go this way. The old bridge isn't safe. It's all this rain. These floods are dreadful. Oh dear, and we're running late as well. I know a shortcut. Just go straight on this way. Thanks, PC Selby. Sorry about the bother, Pat. Then left, past the signpost. Down here. Don't worry, you'll be all right. 
Don't worry, princess. Feels like a plowed field. Watch the gate. Just enough room. I hope Ted knows what he's doing. I knew it. We're lost. You don't know which way from t'other, young Ted. That's not fair. I've been this way dozens of times. It looks a bit different today, that's all. Oh. 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 Now where? We're lost. There was only one way to go. I know where we are. This is the road to Thompson Ground. There were letters to deliver. And Alf was waiting to see the new post bus. Hello, Pat! Usual delivery, Alf. Thank you, Ted. Hello, Dot. Ted. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Granny Dryden was asleep. She woke up. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, are we there? Where's the market? Ted was looking at Alf's tractor. It just won't come off. It will. Well, she told me. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. oh. Lord save us! Look out! Ah, ill heavens! Ouch! Was that the Reverend? Let's go and see. You all right, Reverend? What a ride! Thank the Lord, Alf, that you have hay in your barn. Oh, but I remember now. That's what the knots were for. One, to remember my sister's birthday. Two, to remember to post her present. And three, said Pat, to get new brakes for my bicycle. Why don't you go to town in the post bus? And I'll mend your bike for you. I'll bring it round to the vicarage tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Alf. Time we were on our way, said Pat. All aboard. I think I'll sit in front with Jess. I'm sure he won't mind. Next stop, Ingledale. Bye! Cheerio! Ingledale at last. Everybody back here, please, at two o'clock. We'll not be late, said Miss Hubbard. But when two o'clock came, Granny Dryden was missing. We can't go without her, said Pat. I'll go and look for her, said Miss Hubbard. She'll be in the market, getting potatoes. I wonder where she's got to. She'll be having a good gossip somewhere. Oh, there you are. Have you seen Miss Hubbard? She's looking for you. Looking for me? Said Granny Dryden. I wasn't lost. I'll tell you what. You sit in the bus, and I'll go and look for Miss Hubbard. No sooner had Ted gone than Miss Hubbard came back. Oh, I can't find Granny Dryden anywhere, she said. I think we'll have to report her missing. Oh, there she is in the bus. How did she get there? Well, you see... And where's Ted gone? Looking for you. Oh, but I'm not lost. I know you're not lost, but... Oh, never mind. We'll just have to wait. And I don't know when we're going to get back to Greendale. 
I think I'll sit in the bus and read my paper. But Ted soon came back, and they set off home again. There were letters and a parcel to take to George Lancaster at Intake Farm. George was collecting the eggs. Hey, there's Pat! Hello, George. Hello, Pat. I like your new post bus. It's a great idea. Do you think I could take a dozen ends to the market in it tomorrow? Indeed not, said Miss Hubbard. Just think of the feathers. We'd all be sneezing for a week. Oh, but what lovely eggs. May I buy half a dozen, please? I forgot to get some at the market. There you are, six lovely fresh eggs, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, George. Mind you, don't break them. It was soon time to be on their way. Bye, Pat. There's Dorothy waving from her gate. What can be the matter? Oh, Pat, she said. Mrs Goggins has been on the phone. She's ever so worried. She's wondering where you've all got to. Thinks you've had an accident with the new post bus. Why not come in and give her a ring? Dorothy. You're welcome. You must be parched after your trip. Most kind. Oh, Mrs Goggins does worry so. Hello, Mrs Goggins. Yes. No, we haven't been to Blackpool, just Ingledale. All safe and sound. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. What a time we've had. It's a wonder Pat managed to get us all home again. Now, don't you worry about your old bike, Reverend. I've given it a good oiling. It's as good as new. It just needs some new brake pads. I'll pop round with it tomorrow. More tea, Granny Dryden? Well, just one more cup. There was a saucer of milk for Jess. Come on, everybody. Time to be off. Hang on, Pat. I'll help you turn in the yard. Back you come. Uh, come on. Careful. Stop. Right. Off you go. It had been a long day. The next stop was at Miss Hubbard's cottage. Here we are, Miss Hubbard. Your stop. Just a minute, Pat. Mustn't forget anything. Careful as you get out. Mind the step. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye. Then it was Granny Dryden's turn. Here, let me give you a hand down, Granny Dryden. Uh, thanks, Pat. Me hat! I've lost me hat! Here it is. Looks as though she's been sitting on it. Thanks, Ted. I'll see you to your door, Granny Dryden.
Bye, Ted. Bye, Pat. The last stop before home was at the church. Thank you. My goodness, it's been quite a day. Oh, Pat, I still have a knot in my handkerchief. Now then, Reverend, said Pat, is it a new one or just one that you forgot to undo? I've forgotten, said the Reverend. Oh, dear. Goodbye, Pat. Time we remembered to go home, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom. Black and white cat. 